Nowadays, it's quite common to hear those words, critical thinking. How do you define critical thinking, though? One could spend half a PhD just doing that. Critical thinking is often associated with source assessment. For instance, a message is propagated on social networks. And being critical means asking yourself the following questions. Who said that? What are the credentials of the source? When you hear something like a study said, or an expert said blah blah blah, it should raise a red flag. What is the scientific study that is referred to? Are there links to the original work? Or is the person just making the claim to sound more rigorous than he or she actually is? And so on and so forth. This is indeed one way to look at critical thinking. However, it's not quite the perspective we will follow here. We will first focus more on arguments, their structure, their validity. We will learn together how to quickly recognize fallacies, logical fallacies, arguments that are not valid. For that reason, you will have your fair share of dead languages. Indeed, many fallacies have Latin names because they have been studied for millennia. Post hoc, ergo, propter hoc, ad hominem, and so on. You may sometimes get the feeling that you are learning spells from a grimoire. Rest assured, though, that there is no need that to learn all that by heart, even if you are welcome to do so. The most important thing is that you understand the underlying logic. In other words, we address the following questions in this course. What is an argument? What is a fallacy? How to refute bad arguments? What is the difference between a cognitive bias and a fallacy? But we won't stop there. In the field of data science, most of the time exercising your critical thinking skills means being able to scrutinize the structure of the arguments that are based on data and detecting their flows. But not only. We'll see a few other tricks together. Why you should be annoyed when you see someone using 3D to make a graph look good, for instance. Or why, sometimes, it is vital to show the error bars on a bar plot. It is common to distort graphs or to change colors in order to be more persuasive and sometimes to mislead the reader. You should also question the reliability of the statistical test of the data that you are dealing with. And we are not talking just about the credibility of the source, the people who produce the results. How many times do we hear things like 34.56% of people believe blah blah blah? Well, rest assured that 100% of the time, these kind of numbers should raise a red flag. So many things can happen in the data collection process that make this kind of precision irrelevant. And not, I'm not even mentioning data processing, but also the choice of statistical tests and so on. There are so many mistakes that can be introduced that make the precision that you see in those numbers questionable. Another issue, for instance, and what is when you use percentages on very small samples, like 34% of people said, and the sample is only 12 people. It makes absolutely no sense. Long story short, this course is not purely about logic, nor is it about philosophy, nor is it a data science course. It is somewhere in between. And we believe it's important to have a comprehensive approach to data science and to critical thinking. Now, th now that we have delved a bit into the content of the class, let's provide a more detailed view of the kind of activities we will propose to, uh, and do together.